This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Got a lot to get into, man. It's good to see you. Good to see you, man. It's been a while. It's been a while. Um, I don't know where to start, man. You got anything burning off your chest you need to get the... Uh, yeah. Pete and Sebastian Show, we're back. I'm Pete Corielli, and of course, Mr. Sebastian Maniscalco, as always. And I do want to start out with one thing, because I felt what I saw was finally the turn I was waiting to see, all right? I saw that photo of you, everybody saw it on Instagram, shirt unbuttoned, uh, was it pink suit, like a pinkish suit, right? Pink, and, uh, mauve, whatever you want to call it. And you know how sometimes when you put something up, it even it even gets into your regular world, like Jackie goes, did you see that photo? What'd you think of the color of the suit? And I was like, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even pay attention to the color of the suit. And then some people were texting, what's with the suit? What's with the unbutton? This, that, right? Bro, I have... Okay, this is... I'm going to try to make this succinct and quick. I've known you right before you got big, okay? So you were very good and on your way, but you weren't big. And I have this theory that it's, it's hard to see a person any other way than when you first met them. You know what I mean? So yeah. even though you're doing all this great stuff, so... But you are, bro, you're crushing it, right? You're like the best comic in the world, one of the top five. That's a fact, all right? So then beyond that, it's opinion. But regular guy, regular guy. I felt, for me, when I saw you, in, was it a plane? I don't even know if it was a plane or a car. It was, a, it was a van. A van, okay. You turned the corner, guy. You, oh, you're, you're like the prince of comedy, bro. That's the way you should be dressed. That's the shit you should be doing. You know what I mean? It's like I saw it as people. Some people saw it as like, uh, oh, what's with the shirt undone? Like, you know, I see some comments and I'm like, the shirt should be undone. It's high level rock and roll comedy. You understand what I'm saying? That's how I felt about it. If, when I was a kid, if I saw like Kinnison shirt unbuttoned in the back of a fucking limo, I'd be like, that's yes, that's the height of it. That's what it should be. So I fucking love that photo, guy. I love that photo. Oh, I, well, I appreciate I it. The color, though, the color, though, the color. I mean, that's you know, that's a opinion thing. But the whole, the whole look, the fucking shirt on button, it was, it was cool. Listen, it, this is I'm, being totally blown out of proportion, man. I'm sure, bro. I'm sure. Listen, that was my birthday. We went out to dinner with two other couples that night. Bro. Isn't your birthday in like August? July. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 bro, that's a beauty of Instagram. This shit happened in the summer. Uh, I, I thought I thought by law your Instagram had to be within twelve hours of the <laughs> shot. <laughs> I, unless you're specifically saying me as a youth playing soccer. Other than no. that, if there's Wow, that's I got back the, I got hey. backlog of stuff, bro. I got stuff, you know. You know, last six oh. months, but it actually—you know, got to make it look like it was last night. Oh. Anyway, oh, shit. I got some photos from Hilton Head with my deep tan. I still haven't thrown up there because I thought <laughs> yeah, the time well, passed. Yeah, it's no. I'm Get back up, to Hilton Head. I'm going to Hilton Head tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, bro. So let me take you back. We we went out. We went out. Yeah. Bro, that that suit. Yeah. That's not. That's not a look. The unbuttons, that's not a look, bro. That was, I was drunk and hot and bloated after the oh, dinner. I know and that. And I had to just unbutton everything. Right. It was no, a mess. I know, you did, I know you didn't wear that out like that. Yeah. But I'm just oh, okay. saying. Back no, in no, the bar, I, taking the photo with the, yeah, no, I liked it. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. So it was like a, it yeah. was like a, yeah, it was like a, like a sloppy, I had a lot of right. wine, and it was like, oh, I gotta get this off, and right. then, and that's what that photo was. Now, as far as the color is concerned, bro, I mix it up, man. Oh, I know. Mix you it do, up bro. with the colors, man. Hey, t t hey I'm, I'm like a mint chocolate chip today. Is that what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. I got yeah, I, I got some black. I got some pink. I got yellows. I, whatever, whatever it takes. You know, I'm all over yeah. the I'm all over the rainbow. 
with the with the colors. So, yeah, and to the people's point, oh, what are you doing with the suit? And this is what Hollywood does to you. I know what Hollywood does to you. I was wearing fucking red slacks at 16 to 34's <laughs> teen dance night. So and red <laughs> shoes. So it's always same, been you. It's always been me, man. <laughs> Hollywood, my ass. I love it. Um, I love it. So do you? Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? Go ahead. Um. Well, no. It was, it was, it was, uh, first of all, do you think like if you were in the mob that your outfits could become a problem? Like, do you think anyone ever in the mafia had to sit down because the boss was like, "I'm not liking your attire." I think if I was in the mob and I was wearing that stuff, there'd be a meeting. You know, they'd be like, listen, you got to really tone it down with the pastels, you know? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? And then my other thing, and I don't mean to come at you hard, but just start the cast. And I'm trying to remember the photo, but I felt like I didn't see, because even when I come over, you don't, you didn't swim with me, so you had a shirt on. So uh, I don't think I noticed much chest hair. Is it chest no. hair? Is it? No. no? It was, no. It was, yeah, it was clipped. Oh, it was clipped. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It was, it, it was, why, it was, why? It was trimmed. Why you know you, why? It's For, beautiful. Again, I mean, man, it's just it. Bro, chest. Like, again, I've been doing this since I was 18. Right. I'm shaving my fucking chest every once in a while just to get it down to, to a, a nice. And now, bro, now, what I'm not liking at all. Yeah. And I don't know if you're seeing this. Great chest hair. You want to you wanna feel old? You want to feel old? Right, right, Grow your right. chest hair out at 50. All right? It's a whole different thing in the mirror, man. Well, I I, I, like, I mean, I don't want to show you, but mine's not gray. So, but but like, what am I, I you, you're telling me when my chest hair starts turning gray, you I should be shaving it? You're never going to shave it, regardless if it grows. Yours could grow bright red and you wouldn't shave your chest hair. Right, that's no, just, that's just you. If, 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 hey, a bright red guy, I'd, I'd singe it with fucking big lighter to the roots, so ne- it never comes back. I'm sorry, I could not do that. Hey, listen, this this, <laughs> this gray chest there is really dipping into my age, man. Our friends at Manscaped are helping you clear your driveway, fellas. If you know what I'm saying, they got all the top products to keep things tight down there. Fill your stocking stuffers, all right? Manscaped's products are the top of everybody's wish list. Win this year's elephant gift and help the men in your life go from eggnog to nice hog this December by going to manscaped.com and using the code THECAST for 20% off plus free shipping. Manscaped is one-stop shop for all your holiday needs. They have the perfect gift in the Platinum Package 4.0 plus loads of little presents perfect for stocking stuffers. Listen, I already exchanged with my family. I got a nephew who's in his sophomore year of college. I didn't know what to get him. I went and got him some Manscaped products to take care of yourself downstairs. Bro, he loved it. He even held up the silver ray. He goes, Dad, look, it comes with a razor with blades too and the clippers and the nose things. He, the kid loved the whole package. So if you got a college kid or a young male adult in your life and you don't know what to get him for a gift, I, I can't express enough how Manscaped is the way to go. Manscaped is here to make your holiday shopping a blast by giving you products they'll love. And honestly, they're going to laugh. I mean, my nephew laughed. My mother was like, what did he get you? And then my nephew held it up. I'm like, ma, it's clippers for your nuts, all right? Come on. And then we all laughed. To get 20% off and free shipping with the code, use this code, the cast at manscaped.com. <clears throat> That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com if and only you got to use the code the cast. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code the cast. Well, I was at uh, a bar the other day with some friends after the show, and one of my close friends, he, he's got a goatee going that he doesn't normally have, all right? <clears throat> and it was dark thick dark right so i go just drinking some beers have a good time i go you got a little men's hair club for the beard and and he goes yeah well he goes i don't do it with my hair and his hair wasn't gray at all you know mm. which when you when you immediately say that i'm yeah. thinking you do because you're coming yeah. hard right so yeah. i right away go i'll go listen i tell a story I go i don't dye my hair i go but i had like some audition or pitch or something in la 
and I dyed it. I go, I dyed it, and I thought it looked good, and I know it. I go, I go to cast with Sebastian before I go to the meeting. As soon as we sit down, he goes, before we start the cast, can we discuss the dye job that you did? I, like, like you knew right away. Yeah. And I go, when I was, I go, and I never did it again. It wasn't for me. And then uh, the third guy goes, he's all gray. And he goes, yeah, I don't do any of that. I, I tried it once. And, you know, we're talking about how it makes a mess in your tub. But the one guy who did the goatee, I felt, I felt like he felt like you don't want people to know you do men's hair club if you do. And I'm here to say to all men, I, I couldn't care less if you do or if you don't. I, it's like, I don't think it should be a secret and people should feel like, other people shouldn't know, right? Or do you feel? That's, do you feel like if you dye your hair, you don't want people to know you dye your hair? Very few people could pull off a, a dye job without. You know, I I think you should absolutely. You have to mention that you have dyed hair. I mean, it's just like, right. bro. I could not come to your house with dyed hair and not mention it. I'd have to go. I got a dye job last night. If you come in and you're having drinks with a group of people, yeah, and you dye your hair, that should be the first line right out of your mouth, right when you sit down for a drink. Before you even order the beer, just tell the group, just so you guys know, I dye my hair. Can I have a Miller Lite, please? <laughs> yeah, but what if what if you're a single guy, right, and you get you get a job? Hey, man, we want you to come to Denver. We hear great things about you. You know, single guy, no family. Why don't you come in here here and, and take over and restart? New life in Denver. Uh, you're gonna love it out mm -hmm. here. You you're gray, big time gray. You're going to Denver. Nobody knows you in Denver. Do you go? I'm dying all this shit. So when I walk into Denver, they only know me as the dark haired guy. They don't even no. know I was ever gray. Then could you pull it off, bro? If you come to Denver, they're not yeah. gonna know you as the dark haired guy. They're gonna know you as uh, die job guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so as so you walk. <laughs> He, but you know, you would think, but you would think on some level, if you got like a five hundred dollar die job, who's gonna know? But then I, I look at Giuliani, right? The guy is a rich, powerful man, and it was fucking tripping down his neck. Now you telling me is that men's hair club? You gotta think he's going to the best die job guy in the world. <laughs> maybe not, Mo. Maybe <sighs> not. Maybe maybe he's going. Maybe he's doing it himself in his tub, and it didn't dry. <laughs> and next thing you know, he's. He's sweating that shit off. They're like, on Rudy, camera. come on, we're gonna be late. He's like, ah, shit. <laughs> he does a little pat job. Oh, um, listen, yeah. it's difficult to really do a dye job. There's a way you could do a dye job, which I've done before, just didn't look right on me. Where they don't dye at all. Uh -huh. It's like salt and pepper. So they dye some, but you still got some grays, but not a lot of grays, you know. Right. And it's just, right. it's just very, it's very difficult to to pull it off. Uh. So I just let it go, but this chest hair thing is, is really killing me. I don't even know about the – if I start growing gray in my beard, yeah. I don't do – I don't dye the, the oh, beard. I can't – I, I kind of like a gray beard, you know? Even, you know, you hear the expression gray beard because I feel like I know more than you. If you, you don't have gray in your beard? What the fuck do you know? I've lived <laughs> – you know, I've been broke. I've had money. I've been broke again. I mean, come on, you know. Bro, when I was on that cruise ship, the first stop we made when I was working on that cruise ship, I got off. I bought some pot from a, a cab driver, and I'm on some bench where I could see the boat in the distance. Uh, I was in, like, St. Thomas, and it was a fucking chicken just, like, all around me, just a random wild chicken. And, like, I remember just looking at the chicken and the boat in the background. Rock bottom <laughs> of life rock bottom and i'm looking at the chicken and i'm trying to think if the chicken's in a rock bottom moment or if he's just having a normal day but i'm like i'm fucking and like every, you know guys are doing things that i felt i should have been doing so you know i think some gray came in in that moment right there like every moment you live another gray hair comes in so that's what I see the gray as. It's no, like, bro, I agree, man. They're like rings on a tree, man. It's oh, just... man. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, Absolutely. You, you definitely lived if you got gray. But here, let, let's flip it around. Let's yeah. say you're going gray, right? Right, yeah. Instead of dyeing it, 
do you dye it all gray? Oh, no, you, go, you don't. I don't lean into it. I don't lean into it. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, man. I mean, <laughs> you ever see, come on, you ever have a friend who's gray at 30? It's like, <laughs> fucking that's dust weird. your head, guy. Dust your head. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's a, yeah. That's a different gray at 30. It though. is. It is. It's, I it, mean, Richard Gia had that. Yeah, I yeah, it's 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 very deceiving. Cause you see a guy, you're like, wait a minute, what the fuck happened to you? I mean, what what did, what did you uh, did you work at Lehman Brothers? You know, like where? <laughs> wh- wh- yeah, right. Just why are you gray at 28? No shit. Yeah, but you know, um, when you're gray that young, like yeah, you slide right into old age, and it's like, whoa, no one knows when you got what. You know, you just seem like you've been the same age you are forever. But anyway. You make a good point. If you go gray early, people think, my God, this guy hasn't aged a bit, and it's been 30 years. <laughs> right, man. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um. So I got to get into this, man. I, I, so two nights ago, yeah. I, uh, I perform at uh, Martin Scorsese's 80th birthday party. Did it. Hey. You did it. Wow. I did it. Yeah. Fuck it. Wow. Shit. So I come back from it. Serafina was doing a recital. Man, I got a lot here. I got a lot to unpack. Yeah. Wow, you do? Because I was way off. I thought you were in the back of a plane in that pink suit after the Scorsese show. Um, How off was I? How off was I? I ate pasta yeah. on your fucking birthday. <laughs> All right. Take your time, bro. All right. I, I did this run in New York. I was in New York for like nine days. I had to come back to see Serafina's recital. She was doing Newsies, right? Uh, so I flew back from New York on Monday, got home in the afternoon. Tuesday night was the recital. And right after the recital, I took the red eye with Lana back to New York to perform on Wednesday night at the event. Now, let me take you to the recital. All right. This is the third recital for Serafina. Um, now, I don't know if it's me being biased because it's my kid, but I think I got a good gauge on what's what so um we sit down second row right i'm on the end and uh they come out now my kid is in the middle like there's like a like a three kind of rows she's in the second row all right and I'm on the side i'm trying to get you know video and photo but there's a kid you ever see like there's a kid or this could be an adult too, but I find it more with kids. Just in the way, you know, like no matter where this kid was positioned, I couldn't get a clear shot on my daughter, right? Right. And the kid that's always in the way is just the kid that's yeah shouldn't be there, you know. You know, yeah. it's just. It's just like, get my kid up in the fucking front. I need to see what she's doing. Because right. when it came to, to right. Serafina, she was belting out the lines. You could hear her. You know, some kids, when it comes to their line, they're like, hey, as a parent, as a parent, if you see that, don't you go, you ain't doing this next time around. This ain't for you. Right, like, like I could yeah, tell no, I, Sarah, go, I go, open your mouth, stand up there, <laughs> let him see you're not afraid. Just speak. What do you think's gonna happen? So I always tell Sadie, I go, no, it's gonna happen no matter what you do. And she's like, the sun's gonna come up tomorrow. I go, exactly. No one's gonna care. Just do it. That's the type of parenting yeah. that needs to happen, because that's exactly what I told Serafina. Because in the first, you know, first time she was like shy a little bit, but you, she's still audible. You know, there there wasn't ever a point where I looked at Serafina and go, "You ain't doing this. You, you just this is ain't this ain't for you." I just right. I I knew she had it in her. You just had to bring it out. But 
some of these kids have been in this thing for the third time, the third recital, and they're still doing the same shit. You know, and they're still getting flowers at the end of it. You know, like oh, the parents yeah. are bringing the flowers. What, what, what are you giving flowers for? Mumbling? I know. I know. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. When do we start actually saving the applause based on performance? When do we stop <laughs> just doing it? Good for you being up there with your fucking bunny rabbit hat on. When does that end? Then we go, kids suck, beat it, next. <laughs> you know, I'm right there with you, man. Well, you bring up another great point, and I don't think you really get this on any other cast. <laughs> at, at what at what, at what age? Because now, basically, how you get into this thing right. is you pay the fee, and your kid's yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, and then they audition for parts, and some people got more lines than others, but when does it become, okay, we audition, and then you don't make it? At what age does that happen? Because these kids I, are five. Right. Right. So you so, pay I mean, the fee, at, you get in. At the very least, you'll be a tree, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. No, bro, remember when I told you Sadie did that recital recently where she opened up at the beginning of Halloween? da 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 Right? So uh, Jackie wasn't there, and I told Jackie about the you know the, the, the riffraff that was doing nothing, wasting our time, and I'm tired of it, to your point. I mean, literally, the teacher has to sit on the bench with them and, and, and like, play with them, and I'm yeah. like... Kid scared, don't want to be there. This is the third time. So I, I, Jackie, I said, tell him we're not doing those shows anymore. So Jackie called the piano teacher and said, no offense, we're still going to be taught by you, but we're not doing those shows anymore. So she calls back last week and goes, um, I want to know, uh, they're having a, a flea market Christmas bazaar over the weekend in downtown uh, area of our, where we live. Wanted to know if Sadie would be interested in playing the piano for 15 minutes spurts like three different times, you know, all the Christmas songs she knows. She doesn't have to sing, just play them. Uh, no other kids. I'll just be there super. I said to Sadie, you got your first gig. And the reason you got it is because we told the teacher, get the slugs out of the way or we're leaving. And I think Serafina's just about reaching that point. I don't need this fire hydrant blocking my dad's view of me trying to do my thing, right? Bullshit. Second row bullshit. Put your kid up front where she belongs. Fuck. <laughs> so, so, so the fact that you did that, yeah. Basically, Sadie graduated from that riffraff shit, and now she's right. doing solo stuff. Right. Yes. Yes. I, I I have to ask. I have to ask, and this yeah. is just a natural right. question coming out of right. me. Right. Right. She getting paid? No. And that's what she said. I go, it's your first gig. And she goes, Dad, I'm not getting paid. I'm like, you know how many times I fucking slung jokes before I got a dollar for it? <laughs> Shit. I go, I had to pay a lot at the beginning, right? <laughs> but but you as a parent here, right? if you told the teacher, yeah, yeah, she'll do it. But a uh, couple free lessons with that? You know, right? A little something. I know. Uh, I said to Sadie, "Are you gonna sing the songs? Because I know you know them too." Nah, I'm just gonna play. I go, not even like it's a little, a little light singing. So if somebody is there and go, and she's singing, and then they just kind of come up and get a little, and she goes, "Nah, I might. I don't think so, Dad." But now she's practicing, and I, I hear her, and they're going, "Fa la 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 la." So. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the teacher will throw three bucks or something. We'll see. But it don't matter. It's a gig, and you're separating yeah. yourself, you know. And that's and look, it's happening in other sports. Sadie's playing other sports where I'm starting to see. Yeah, your friend is way better than you at soccer, Sadie. <laughs> it's pretty clear. You yeah. know, you're not going to be great at everything. But I is agree. Serafina a singer more or a dancer or what's what's her? What does she enjoy the most? What do you think? Acting. Uh. You know, they, they sing, and it's not like I'm hearing, you know, Mariah Carey, but... No, it's just in, in liking singing, you know? Yeah, I mean, she... It's a little bit more of a personality thing with her when it comes yeah. to this thing, where you could just... Some kids, when they do it, they're like, they're like a mope. But Serafina, like, you know, she's, she's you know, kind of... A little personality, a right. little, little twang to the... Uh, 
to the lines or whatever, a little body movement, what what have you. And the other kids, you know, I just, you know, so again, nothing against the other kids. I'm just saying, trying to make right. the point of, like you're saying, kids in soccer, when do we go, okay, you, you there was a kid growing up named Danny that played soccer. He might listen to the cast. He knows. He, this, he, I think he reached out to me once saying that he listens to the cast, but he, he wouldn't mind me saying this. This guy didn't belong on the soccer field, all right? Oh, couldn't play? No good? Oh, God. This was every time. This, he was so bad, every time he got the ball, someone from our team went to go take it away from him because it was just you, you knew right. he, he was a liability on the field, all right? right. Yeah. Now, now this does Danny's parents go? Because even we were looking at the parents, going, "What are you doing?" You know, what it, age? It was what like, age we talking? What age? We're we talking? talking 12, 13. That's, Shit, that's, we're dipping yeah. even. We we even dipped in the freshman year of, of high school with this kid on our team. Oh wow, that's getting serious now. Yeah, and it was like um, college the, scouts are going to start coming around, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> So right, you don't be getting scouted and like, oh, we like Matt Scalco, but he keeps taking a ball away from his teammate. Yeah, stick <laughs> around. Danny sucks. You'll see why I'm doing that. <laughs> no offense, Danny. I'm just saying. You know, yeah, sport. no. Dan, believe me, Danny knew. Danny knew he had yeah. no future in sports. Yeah, I sucked what? at soccer myself. Oh God, bro, I loved it. Um, but even if we're looking at Danny's parents going, the equivalent would be like. A guy is in a boxing ring and he's getting the shit kicked out of him. And you're looking at the corner going, throw in the towel. <laughs> That's what we looked at Danny's parents like, what are you doing out there? Like, what are yeah. you doing, man? He belongs in right. a band or something, right. not right. on the soccer field. That's all I'm saying here is you got to look at your kid and, 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 and go, okay, are we just putting them in this? because it's something for them to do or you know like i just at five or six you start to go okay like caruso at, he's three and he's in soccer they're goofing around and we're not looking for messy out there yeah we're, yeah. we're just you know they're, they're running around but when you start getting five and six and you start to see okay this might not let's get another activity you hop out of this yeah, I, You're bro done. i couldn't agree with you more all right, bro, we got another Omaha Steaks read. If you don't mind me taking the lead, I know I'm no, not bro, much of a... go ahead, man. I am not... No, what I'm saying when it comes to cooking, I'm not going to take the lead because you know I don't cook much. I went with the chicken. We had a couple of Omaha Steak chicken breasts. I mean, just uh, I'm not even a chicken guy, but when you hold them up, you can just tell it's a special chicken. It really... So anyway, I made a couple chicken breast sandwiches, a little mozzarella on top, I was going to put on some red sauce, but I kind of felt I'd be doing a disservice to the chicken. So I just went with a little olive oil and some tomato, and my knees buckled. Man, it's still time, (laughs) folks, for the holiday season. You got to get some Omaha steak delivery to somebody. They're going to love it, bro. Bro, now is the perfect time to take advantage of the 50% off site-wide by shopping their friends and family sale. I did it last week for a party I had. I bought 53 pounds of meat to cook at my party. And it's one of these things when you cook it and people eat it, generally they don't go, where's the meat from? With the Omaha, they're like, the flavor is exploding in oh. my mouth. Where'd you get it from? I go, where'd I get it from? OmahaSteaks.com. Use our promo code, the cast at checkout, and get $30 off your order. Oh Don't wait, people. Go to OmahaSteaks.com and stock up today. Omaha Steaks isn't just steaks, Pete. What is it? It's the best steak of your life, guaranteed. You heard it here on the Pete and Sebastian Show. And don't forget to score that extra $30 off your order when you use the cast at checkout. Bro, not only does the smell draw them over, but when I barbecue and, and I use Omaha Steaks, it's a great move. I tell, like I told my brother, I'm like, oh, I got some Omaha Steaks on. They do the scurry over to the grill. Like if you just said you got steak on, they're like, oh, I hope they go good. Omaha, they come over. So you guys... Get Omaha Steaks. Do it for the holidays. Visit omahasteaks.com. Promo code THECAST at checkout.
Minimum order may be required, but you're going to order more than the minimum anyway. I got a couple points to make. First of all, with the Danny point, I don't think it's the parents' responsibility as much as it's the coaches to start going, listen, we got to. But maybe was there was there another player better than Danny? I mean, you know, maybe Danny was the 13th, 11th best guy, that, you know, that you had. Well, you bring up a good point here, too. You know, this is the late 80s, so we were skimming the barrel for, for right. soccer players back then. You didn't then. have back a guy named was... Tim on the bench where you're like, why are we putting Tim in? The guy's a deer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you, but, bro, your point about we're not doing anything with this, this is, I can't believe I forgot to tell you this. So, you know, we had Sadie and Karate for two years, okay? So recently, and she goes twice a week. And you can go any any two days of the week you want to go, and and they have a thing called a kata, like, and we go show a shikata, and it's it's like va va va, it's all these moves. But whenever Sadie would show us her kata, I look at Jackie, and I'm like, it's a dance move, like there's no, huh, 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 you know, like you know. Mm-hmm. And then I see some of the other kids doing their katas, like in the summertime at the pool, messing around, and and they're all doing it. I'm like, they look like they're in uh, ABBA, the band, singing backup. You know, they're not like kicking it, you know? So I'm like, how, you know, if I kept my kid in this by 18, if a boy tried to make a move on her, is, is he gonna, is she gonna like be able to, you know, make pass, make a pass out with the pinch, just, you know, like, is she gonna be good at this shit? And it wasn't looking that way. So then she's gotten really into diving, and then we found out gymnastics helps with diving. So she's going to go back and do some gymnastics. And now weeks are getting filled up. So long story short, we go, what do you want to do? Say the karate. And she's like, all right, let's not do the karate. I don't have time for the karate, right? We're like, great. Now the karate, every month the guy rebuilds you for three months. And we've been doing it two years. So And Sadie's first day of going was like November 5th. So on November 2nd, in the morning, Jackie texts the guy and goes, oh, we're not going to go back for the next three months. Sadie's doing other stuff. Well, I already ran her the bill through. And Jackie goes, he, for 300 something bucks, you know? And Jackie goes, yeah, well, we didn't go, though. We haven't even started this. Once I do it, I don't reverse it. It's just policy. So Jackie goes, you're charging me for three months, even though I'm not going to be there and I can't do it, and I haven't even gone once? That's, I'm sorry, that's my policy. So I come home, I was on the road. Right? And she tells me about this. And I'm stewing, but I'm, you know, I'm like, all right, it's this policy. And then after like three nights, I'm sitting upstairs and I'm talking to Jackie. Say he just went to bed. I go, give me the, is, does he has karate at night? Is he there at night? And she goes, yeah. I go, does he answer at night? And she goes, yeah. I go, give me his number. So I call the guy up, right? And he gets on. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? This is uh, Sadie's dad, P. Corielli. Oh, hey, hi, how can I help you? Yeah, I know you had a conversation with my wife about my daughter not doing karate anymore. And I go, um, I was on the road, I wasn't around. And uh, listen, I, I know that's your policy and you're not going to change your policy. But I just had to let you know what a weak move that is. And he goes, I'm sorry. I, 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 you know, I'm know, i glad I have him on the phone because this guy could kill me with his left pinky. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he trains like <laughs> fucking jujitsu guys. And I'm not being rude. But I couldn't let it go. I said, I go, I just want you to know what a weak move that I think that is. And he's like, why? I go, we've been going for two years. Never missed a payment. Even all your extra little parties that you have, we we signed up for those. Like, every sport Sadie does, they have a Halloween party, and you just go and there's candy. He does it, he charges 20 bucks. And then he gives you a Tootsie Roll, right? So, but we do it, we do it anyway, right? We don't miss any of it. And I go, so we do all your stuff and and da da da. And I go, and, and we haven't even started this three month session and, and you and you're taking our money. And I'm like, um, I forget how I put it. I go, but you just you're just taking the money. And he goes, Well, that's my policy. And I go, again, I understand it's your policy, but I just want you to know it's really bad business. Because now if somebody asks me about a karate school, I'm gonna mention the other one. I'm certainly not gonna mention yours. And I just hope it was worth the three hundred dollars to have somebody out there that like is going to go out of their way to let people know, like to go to the other karate school. I mean, you know, I just, I'm, and he goes, I'm sorry. He goes, listen, I, I, I tried to help her with the, with the, cause we had to buy sparring equipment that Sadie used once. It's like, I don't know, 150 bucks or something. Uh, I, I tried to help her, you know, pass that along. 
I go, help her pass it along. She told me that you said you can't take that back because it's been used and for safety reasons. Like, you know, gloves, baba, you know, whatever, man. So I go, again, man, I, you know, your policy is your policy. And, uh, you know, I, I wish we were ending on better terms, but I just, I just couldn't let it go without letting you know what a weak move I thought that was. I'm sorry you feel that way. And I'm like, I'm sorry, too. Have a good night. And I, go, and I, and I slept like a baby because it's just... I, I see, bro, the last one I want to say, I went to Tim Hortons the other day, Timmy Ho's, I go through the drive-thru a lot and get a coffee. So I'm going through the drive-thru, I order my coffee, and then I'm looking for my wallet, and I realize I left my wallet at home. I can't back out now because there's cars behind me, and I'm waiting, now I gotta wait until it's my turn, just to tell her, forget it, I don't have my wallet. I pull up, she got the coffee, I go, I forgot my wallet, forget it, and she goes, oh, okay. Oh, oh God! You, you don't even give me the coffee. <laughs> Jack, Jackie goes. Why would she give you the coffee? I go. Look at me. I'm here every day. I'm in a nice room. Wait, you act like I'm pulling up on a bike with a fucking needle dangling out of my arm. You know, I forgot my wallet. So you know, bro. Bad business. It's all around me in this town. <laughs> 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 well, th- this this is what what's what's so stunning now a days. And if that was back in the 1960s, they would have gone, eh, thank you. You've been here. You come here all the time, or or get me tomorrow. You know, it's not like. Right, like you right. say, not like an out of town or first time you're there. You know, like you, you go there a lot, so you would yeah. think they would just give it to you on the arm or whatever. The yeah. fact that she pulled it away and put it on the side, like oh. wh- where- <laughs> what are you gonna wait for the next guy to get a two and two, and then just give him that fucking lukewarm one? <laughs> <laughs> But I don't know if that comes from upbringing or if that comes from the training or what it is. But it's just, it's amazing how the customer service in this country has dipped into the toilet. And I don't think it's, (laughs) you you can't get it, we can't get it back, man. It's just not, I was on a flight (laughs) yesterday, uh, JetBlue, and there's an older flight attendant. And normally the older flight attendants, in my experience, tend to be a little beat out. You know, they've been doing this for 35 years, you know. <laughs> skin, same... skin like Tommy Lee Jones, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, uh, absolutely. So, you know, they here, here, I'll give you an example. And I did this twice just to see the reaction. I had a suit in a, in a um, garment bag, right? And I yeah. want it hung. So I got on the plane and I said, uh, you got a closet? Like asking any question right when you get on the plane nowadays, you know you're going to get like, a, like something, like an attitude, right? Oh, yeah. right? Right away. Yeah. So I go, you got a hanger for this? And there was no yes or no. You, you know what she asked me? What seat are you in? Like, confrontational. Wow. So I said, uh, I'm in 3C. She goes, oh, okay. I go, let me ask you something. If I was in 28D, <laughs> would that one have made a difference if my shit got, got hung or not? And <laughs> she goes, yeah. Yeah. I said, okay. Put it away. Come back off the plane. The return flight. I asked the same question. Different flight attendant. She asked me the same thing. What seat are you in? But it, was, it wasn't as confrontational. I said, I'm in 3F. I said, what if I wasn't 15F? She goes, I was still would have done it, depending on whether or not we have room. But it's winter time, so a lot of people want their stuff hung. But, yeah, you know, beautiful answer. Just beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I sit down. She comes over. Uh, 
Lana and I were talking about why you can't recline your seats. Be, like, why can't you, when on takeoff, why can't you be laying down on takeoff, right? Right, right. And in landing, why do you have to bring it all up? That was the question. And we, we surmised that, you know, if something did happen, people have to get out and you're laying down or whatever could cause an issue. I know. But I yeah. said, yeah. Why up forty five thousand feet? If something happens and you're laying down, <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, what's the difference, right? Right. So well, you might fall ask. asleep and then you won't wake up. You'll be so fast asleep in your fucking <laughs> Delta seat that you won't yeah. wake up. Yeah. Continue. So, so, so the flight didn't come over, and Lana asked her that question. Why? And she was basically saying, on takeoff and landing, the probability of there being a problem is higher than if you were in the air. So we need the things. But she's very friendly. The way she. But this is what solidified it for me with this woman. I was wearing an earbud, right? And it fell out of my ear. She was coming down, and I was looking. By, by the way, if you lose something on an airplane, if, if, if something falls on the floor, right. you basically got to yeah. dislocate three parts of your body to find it, right? Oh, you got it. Contortionist, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah I'm, I, I got my head between my knees. And every, everything starts to hurt. So she saw this. She goes, did you lose something? I said, yeah, my earbud. Let me get a flashlight. She comes back, bro. I go, no, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. She goes, oh, let me get on my hands and knees. I'll be able to find it within 10 seconds. Bro, within three seconds, she found the fucking earbud. I couldn't believe it. She knows where shit goes. That's how long she's been working as a flight attendant. If something falls out of your ear, she knows where it goes. You know, like yeah, yeah. She, she just that, been that, doing she, this so long. Yeah, she, she knows where it's look. gonna land. I love it. I love it. That's service, bro. That's old school service. Mm -hmm. By the way, you ever have someone their phone falls out of their pocket on a plane and hits the floor? It sounds like a goddamn bomb. It scares the shit out of me. <laughs> Boom! What the? Right? I'm like, bird, we hit a fucking goose. Holy shit, we're going in the river. We're going in the river. <laughs> it's just a phone. Bird strike. It happened to <laughs> Bro, it happened to me uh, on the way to New York. The phone fell. Uh, here, you ever do this? The phone fell, right? But by the sound of it, I thought it was by me. Uh-huh. Right? So I go down to look, but it's by her, right? Yeah. Here's the question. <laughs> If if what like if I'm down there are, are ready, but it's by her, do I still go and get it? What do you do? You, you, once you realize it's not your kid, you're like, oh fuck it, right? Like that sort of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, so, you bring up a good one. You ever do this when you ever somewhere in public and you, your phone beeps for a text, and you go to check, and then you realize it's someone near you. They got the text, so you gotta pretend you weren't about to check yours. Yeah, like, like I feel like they're looking at me like, nah, you got nothing, guy. It's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, We're way man. off track. I can't wait to hear about this Marty birthday party. Uncom is good. The, the products, they're high quality. They're unique. They're often uh, handmade. When the hell have you had a handmade product in the oh, last no. 10 years? The, the, the stuff they make at Uncommon Goods, after these things are made, the person who made it steps away and cries. Because <laughs> they can't believe what they just made. That's how meaningful and most out of the ordinary these gifts are. And listen, I don't know what other people are doing on their casts. And I know we got to get to the, you know, why, why you got to go to Uncommon Goods. But if you just look at the humor peppered in <laughs> to the to the ads why would you even fast forward this bro get 15 percent off your next <laughs> gift go to uncommongoods.com slash the cast that's uncommongoods.com slash the cast for 15 percent off don't miss out on this limited time offer and i'm not lying to you when i say this is limited so don't play games uncommon goods we're out of the ordinary they're out of the ordinary. The whole thing's out of the ordinary. I don't even know why you're still listening. You should already be on your computer, Google it, Uncommon Goods. Done.
So it's a Casa Cipriani. This is uh, this is part of the Cipriani chain. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with it. It started in uh, Venice, uh, Italy. Cipriani Hotel, Cipriani Bar. It actually started as a bar in Venice. I think uh, Hemingway used to go there and write. Um, but Casa Cipriani, I get there. Lana comes with me. So it's Lana and I. Check in. Nice hotel and whatnot. It's a hotel uh, in Manhattan? Yeah, downtown. I've never even heard of it. Is it, is it big, it's small? Brand new. Brand new. Oh, it, it okay. Used to, it used to be a ferry station where the, the ferries used to pull up and people used to load in on the ferries. So they, they, oh. they made it a hotel. So I go down for sound check. 220 people. And all the names of the people that are attending are on the tables, right? So I start to see. I want to see who's there. I want to see who's in the crowd. Who, who's performing? Or, or sorry, who am I performing for? So I'm starting to look. I'm recognizing some of the names. Some of his family obviously is there. Some of the cards. And the guy goes, uh, I go, where's Scorsese sitting? Yeah, right here. He's sitting at the now. It's a long room, so he's sitting, maybe two tables in, like kind of in the center of the room. This is who's at the table. At his, his table. table, yeah. Spielberg, D, LDC, De Niro, Jennifer Lawrence. Daniel Day Lewis and uh, Benicio del Toro. Bro, by the way, well, we'll get to that. What the fuck, bro? Daniel Day Lewis. I, can't, I thought he'd never leave. He makes shoes and he only leaves to do a film every like five years <laughs> and he goes back to making shoes. I can't, I can't even believe he was there. Dude, this guy's like the greatest living actor, the greatest yeah. actor of all time. Yeah, and yeah, this guy comes out like one. He comes out like locusts. You know, like once does he every laugh at? I don't even see him as laughing. Everything is must be so serious in his life. Wow, bro, what a fucking table to be performing for. And, and De Niro, De, sorry, De Niro's at the table too. So I know you said that. Oh, I said that. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's that table. What were you saying about Benicio del Toro? No. Oh, we'll get to that. You, oh, oh, you say get to that. Okay. Now, I'm nervous going into this. Not so much because of that table. Just, I don't, you know, you never, I don't know if I could put this, if you're not a comedian, you know, you do a corporate event, you know, some of these corporate events are a little tight. You know, the boss is there. Of we course. don't know if we should laugh. And, you know, you run into that. Some oh, corporate yeah. gigs are better than others. But the, the, the stigma of corporate is just that it's corporate. It's 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 a little stuffy. All right. But this is like um this is Hollywood, you know, movie people. This would be like the equivalent of performing at like a award show, like a Golden Globe or a right. uh, an Oscar thing, just because it leans heavy to one side of the aisle, you know. Uh Politics wise, right? Right. Yeah. No. Of course. Yeah. I got some stuff that I'm going to be doing that night. Um, that might not be. Um, put it this way: a little. It's a little unwoke, right? The material. Okay. We're like before you go any further because we're having fun weaving in and out of this. This is an unbelievable story. I. I I wouldn't even sometimes know what these people, when I say Hollywood types, I know they don't like their woke, but like, what would they like in a perfect world? Do you think they'd like, uh, like a Don Rickles making fun of them? Or, um, I don't know what kind of comic, if you had every comic that ever lived available, you know, I mean, I feel like you would be great, but you know, I suppose, well, depend on what you're using, what you're choosing to talk about. But so you had some. What was the material you were going with? 
I'm, let me just walk you through this. I was a surprise. Marty didn't even know I was performing. Oh, he didn't even. I don't like those kinds of shows. <sighs> I don't like when the person performing for doesn't know I'm performing because sometimes they could be in the middle of a great conversation, right? And they're like, "Good to see you, Bill." What? What? Who? Who's? It? <laughs> like I've done shows like that where I perform at a wedding and they didn't yeah. want me. Uh, I, I'm gonna take it a step <laughs> further. Eh? My fear is they're going to bring me out and Scorsese's going to go. What the f- What's that? <laughs> what? Dude. I think, I think his, his family got a pretty good idea of who his favorite or one of his favorite comedians is and, and called that guy, meaning you. I mean... And then, and freaking, you were in his movie, guy. What are you talking I, I about? I know, I know, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying, generally speaking, yeah. is that I know. And we talked about this before. A lot of people come to my shows. I know, I know, but there's a there is in my in my head. If I were, if Dave Chappelle came out, all 220 people would know who Dave Chappelle is. Okay, in my case, this might not be the like, they introduced oh, me. They introduced me, and they didn't even say I was a comedian. So when I walked out, some people were like, "Was this a crooner?" <laughs> like, you know, like <laughs> they might not even know it's a, c- a comedy until three <laughs> minutes in, right? Like, they might not even right, know I'm a comedian. Right. They might think, yeah. hey, "What the fuck is this guy gonna say?" Is <laughs> right. a young Tony right. Bennett. I, I guess I find that hard to believe, but all right, all Don't right, believe it, believe okay. it. Okay. So I'm like, oh fuck, you know. So I, I you know, as, as as comedians, this is what we're thinking about. Hey, do they know me? What do I got to do right off the bat? Like, what do you open with in an environment like that where comedy is a surprise to everybody in the audience, right? Because right. generally speaking, you go to a comedy show, you're kind of in that mindset of, okay, we're going to laugh tonight. This is, yeah. right. this is hey, we're all in black tuxes. This is Scorsese's party. Hey, you know, remember that movie we did? Wait, hold on. What? Right. what? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Right. right. So uh, Rick Yorn, who's his manager, and DiCaprio go up, and they do... Uh, a speech separately each one of them th- does a speech um and I, we've talked about this before reading off the phone i didn't do it no i've seen this at weddings i've seen this at best man speeches they read off the phone lana did it once i go either either you memorize this damn thing or cue cards i don't know i, I off the right. phone it looks like you know you could be doing it and next thing you know you'll get a text and go and then no, you gotta wipe a, that away you know one cue card with bullet points like you, you got a funny pool store you go pool yeah bar uh good luck yeah and then that you, you know like what they give the president <laughs> <laughs> sit down <laughs> smile <laughs> By the way, speaking yeah. of politics, I know people don't like when we get into politics, but here in Los Angeles, uh, Rick Caruso, the uh, the guy, he lost. I know. Did so. you see that? Yeah. This guy spent $100 million. $100 million on campaigning. This woman, I think, spent 14 bucks and <laughs> she won. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. So, I'm concerned about a the environment, b if they even know I'm a comedian, and c the material and the oh. content that I've chosen. Bro, you scared me. I thought I, I literally thought at first you were saying the environment, like the trees and shit. I didn't realize you were back on the story because you go, I care about the environment because you were talking oh. politics, oh. and I'm like, oh god, what again? 
When did he start granola eating on me now? <laughs> oh, you, you, you went back to the, to the story. Sorry. I'm back right. in the Scorsese. So you're worried about the environment in the room. And what else are you worried about? I'm worried about, it's a, it's a, nobody knows there's comedy. Yep. I'm, in, I'm worried about who I'm performing for and B, the material I've chosen for this particular show. And right. what am I opening with? Right? Like, am right. I opening with a funny story about Scorsese and I? Am I opening with straight material? What am I going to do? Okay, so this is what I chose to open with. Just observing people. And and, and I'll talk this one out. I won't do it as I, I told the joke. But generally speaking, for a black tie affair, I believe women go and buy a dress particularly for that event. It's not that they go in their closet and, and they have something. They probably go out and get a special something. I'm not saying every woman there, but mm -hmm. I would say if I was a betting man, more wo women bought a dress than more men bought a tuxedo. Okay? Are, are we in right. an agreement? Okay. What were you saying? The men, men rented this instead? Men have a tuxedo. And my theory is, when oh, I, I when there's that. a when there's a black tie event, men wear the tuxedo they have. That they don't they go have. buy a new one. And the women right? always gets a new dress. Most yeah. of them. All right. Yeah. So funny, funny yeah, premise so, right out of the gate. Okay. So a lot of men are hoping to God that fucking thing fits because when we bought it five ten years ago, we might have been at a different weight, right? Right. So I open up with basically this concept of there's a lot of guys in here that probably didn't fit into their tuxedo tonight. And after that meal, I'm I'm guessing some of you want to maybe loosen a couple buttons. All right. <laughs> That's what I got to get into. I mean, a little light, little environment. You know, just sure. Just just a little observational stuff. To Compliment let you know. to the meal. Compliment to the meal too. By the way. Yeah. Um, I would say crickets, but crickets do make a sound. Really? Wow. Come on. Okay. I get, I'd be saying a, a smattering of laughter. I would, I would, I, 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 that, it's like a, ah, it, it, I, I couldn't even, it was nothing. So I'm like, all right. I'm not thrown though. There was a overwhelming confidence I had that came on right when I walked on stage. I don't know where this came from because in the yeah. back I was having a panic attack. But right. when I got on, on the stage, it all went away, and I just felt at home and at ease. So I'm like, all right. I start plowing into the material. Uh, I start doing relationship stuff. Just, you know, I figure everybody's a couple and I do stuff about getting ready to come here and how women get totally ready. Totally makes ready to sense. Home. Yeah, yeah, nice. Nothing. I'm getting nothing. No, what do you mean nothing? You're not getting nothing on that. I'm not getting nothing. I'm getting uh, Catherine Narducci, who is an actress who I worked with in uh, The Irishman. She, do you know her? I know of her, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I've been friends with her for a while. She's in the front row, and she's laughing. Beautiful, Catherine. Love you for that. Yeah. So um, I look down at the clock. I got a 20-minute set. I look down at the clock. We're about five and a half minutes in, and this is like performing at, like, you know when you do a corporate gig, and it's like a, a cancer charity, and they showed a video of the cancer patients, and and why they're raising the money and you see like kids who are four years old and they're bald and they're like you know right, thank, right. thank you for doing it and then every, you know they clap and, and then please welcome pete Coriel. and then, then you come right. out you gotta do comedy right. this is this is like they showed eight cancer videos before <laughs> i got on. oh my god what i don't understand like did you did you make reference to hey you guys might not know i was coming up here i got 15 more to go let's just have a good time like none of that you just keep about six or seven minutes, I start poking fun at them. Beautiful. You know, I, I'm st I start to reverse it, going, uh, you know, I go, listen, I know, I know, some of you probably don't like what I'm saying up here, but loosen up your hole. It's okay. You know? <laughs>
<laughs> about nine and a half minutes in, I get the first kind of big laugh. I, mean, I wouldn't call it big. I'm just saying it's it's big for this event. Yeah. Um, and then I cut it at around seventeen, and I do a personal story about Scorsese and I. Uh on set that you know when I told you that the De Niro him and Pesci got in a circle after he yelled they they yelled cut. Did I tell you the story? No. When I did the Irishman, the first yeah. day, the scene is with me, De Niro and Pesci, right? So I do the first scene, I hear cut Scorsese comes out and De Niro, Scorsese and Pesci get in a huddle and they start talking. And I'm I'm like 15 feet away from him with this bodyguard that I got in the in the scene. And I look at him and I go, I go, I think it's over for me. <laughs> <laughs> like in <coughs> like in my head, uh, in my head, they're right. going, what the fuck is this guy doing here? <laughs> yeah, that, this is what I'm thinking they're saying. They're going, and you guys got Bobby Cannavale's phone number on the thing. Let's text him. Let's see. And Bobby Cannavale's in the movie oh. playing a different character. Oh, that's they, right. They, they probably asked, do you think he could play this one too? Because we don't know what's happening here. Jesus, call Scott Bayo at this point. It's a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please so, tell me. To, yeah, go ahead. I told that story at the thing. Got a, got some laughs, and then I just basically told them, "You don't know what you know." You know, casting me in that movie did for my confidence moving forward. I, I felt you know like s- such an appreciation. Thank you so much. Da, 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 da. I got uh, claps. I left. Van Morrison comes on to perform. Oh right? my god. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. I can't even tell you how much I fucking love Van Morrison. That guy is like a god. Oh, my God. You fucking saw Van Morrison. What is he, like 90? No, he's old, yeah. though, right? No, no, he's like he's he's almost 80. I think he's about 78 because wow. I looked it up that night. Holy shit. Now, Van Morrison comes on. He's a surprise, right? Now, he gets the reaction that you get. You know, when, when you're surprised, you know, like, oh, whoa, oh, oh, my God. You know, like, you, what I just like did? A... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Half God. a mile down the Kenny Road and the rain start coming down. Me and Billy. Oh, my God, bro. I mean, that's like, that's like literally for me up there with Mick Jagger coming out alone. I mean, Van Morrison. So... Okay. Did you talk to him for a second? Okay. I asked Lana, what does this guy say? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit, bro. That's crazy to me. It was Lana sitting there going, you my brown eyed girl. Yeah. We yeah. used to sing. Oh. No. Obviously, God, I know this. You may as well be Chubby Checker, right? I mean, <laughs> nothing. God. <laughs> what was this guy saying? <laughs> Van Morrison heard that. He'd go, nobody said that about me since I was 13 fucking years old. That was the last time somebody looked at me and said, what does this guy say? <laughs> oh man obviously i know the catalog right i just don't know the guy that sings the stuff you know like right right now right now girl i i you know this song used to come on at our fraternity house all the girls used to go crazy brown i and then get in there and i go ah, what the fuck we gotta wait till this is over because i want to you know, <laughs> i want to like dance st- to that I can dance to this. There's no. I, I, I'm not a guy that gets on the dance floor and does a group sing. I get out there and I, I gotta move. <laughs> oh, for you, when a song has words, it's rude. Change the channel. All right. <laughs> singing, singing. Oh God. 
Oh, oh man, I can't. But still, uh, by the way, I want to go on record saying when you were telling me that uh, Scorsese and them huddled, I, I was only cracking jokes because I thought you were going to tell me that they were messing with you. Were they messing with you? When uh, no, no, oh, no, no, no. This is this is like you know, I I, I just chalked it up. These guys have been working together for forty five years, right? And they're they're either a talking about my performance, which is awful. B talking about talking about uh, where they're going to go to dinner that night right. or or C talking about you know what they're going to do in the scene so I yeah, just yeah gotcha chalked gotcha. it up to them just being very familiar with one right. another um by the way I just so have I said to go that, record bro the, yeah. the whole run that you were in in that movie that whole run that you were in was the most entertaining part and I'm not saying it because you're my buddy it was you did great the fucking clam house it was like the closest to good fellas like that that it was exciting so I don't well, think they, I think they were huddling saying I mean, we picked them right Found guy. something out though, man. Found something out. That night I found something out. The night at the show thing that you did. The night yeah. at the yeah, the cocktail hour. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Bro, you know what? You know what I want to do here? I'm going to do something that's you've never seen done <laughs> either on the Pete and Sebastian show or yeah. I think this could be, this could be the first time this has ever been done on a podcast. <laughs> right. To be continued. Oh wow, wow! I've, I I haven't had that since I used to watch Batman. <laughs> you remember that? And they'd always they get caught, and you gotta watch the next night to see how to get away. Bro, right. I'm just gonna let this All right. fade off. I don't know if we got a graphics department, Patrick, but at the end of this, could you put just to be continued dot, dot, dot? Bro, I'm having flashbacks to Three's Company. Oh, shit. That was a great show, man. That really was. <laughs> great, great show. I loved Larry. Let's, oh, Larry's, I, Larry uh, does not get the type of credit he deserves in a sitcom. Uh, this guy was probably one of the best character, top five I've ever seen in a sitcom. Larry, yeah. and I'm going to go back to this uh, sitcom called God, Dear John, starring. Uh, oh, you, you know of it? Kirk. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Dude, one time I saw an episode with Kirk. He went to a wedding, and they said, How was he? He goes, I look so good. When they asked the bride if she was going to marry the groom, she looked over at me. She had to think about it. And <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> All right. All right. To be continued, bro. Next right. week, we're going to pick up where we left off with the Scorsese uh, uh, party because there's just no way I could fit it in, in, in the amount of time allotted. All right. I'm looking forward to it, bro. Really, it's unbelievable that you did that show. <laughs> I want to hear about the interaction with LDC. Oh, uh, that's all that next week. Next right. week on the Pete and Sebastian show. We'll see you. <laughs>